So in this video, we're going to finish up our linked list implementation by implementing the iterator method. And we'll do that by creating a private class that implements the iterator interface. So I'm going to create a private class, linked list iterator. And it's going to implement the iterator interface. One of the nice things is when you implement an interface, you can hover over there and you'll notice I'm getting an error because I haven't implemented those methods. So I'll just add them and Eclipse will give me stub implementations of those methods automatically. So the iterator is going to keep track of where it is in the list. And we'll call that the current reference. And I'll use Eclipse to automatically create a constructor for me here. And so there we go. So here's my constructor. So since this is private, I don't actually need to specify the full name there. List node should be sufficient. And I think everything is good there. So when we create an iterator, we can actually create an iterator starting at any point. We could just by default start at the head, but this gives us a little flexibility if we want to implement a method to say, generate a partial list of the elements or something like that. So we'll leave this as is. So we need to implement has next. The has next is actually pretty straightforward to implement because we can return the result of comparing current not being null. If the current reference is null, there's nothing left. If not, we're referring to something. And then as we go through the array, we'll say current equal to current.next. Eventually, it'll be it'll be the tail. So when current's the tail, current.next will be null. That sets current to null, and this will fail. But for has next, this is a sufficient condition to return the correct value. Now, next is a little more complicated. And remember, next is going to return the next element in the iterator which in this case will be the next element in the list. So the first thing we need to do is check if there's anything left. If there's nothing left, we're going to return null. There is no element to return. Otherwise, we're going to return the current nodes element, and then we'll set current equal to current.next. So you'll notice each time we call this method, actually it might be easier if we look at a picture. So if we look at what a linked list is, we start off in the iterator and say, we'll start it off with the head. And we'll see that when we actually implement our iterator function, we will return a linked list iterator that starts at the head. That's that current node. Then when you call next, it will return the element stored here and then set current equal to this node. Call next again, returns the element, sets, ne sets current to its next, which is this node. Call it again, returns the element, goes to this node. Now when current's the tail, when you say next, it returns the element there and says current is equal to current.next, which is null in that case, current will be null. So on subsequent calls to the next function, it'll return null and has next would return false. So for our iterator method, we don't want to return null here. We're going to return a new linked list iterator that starts at the head node. So here's an example where polymorphism with interfaces is nice. This iterator method needs to return an iterator well, linked list iterator that I just defined, since it implements the iterator interface, is an iterator. So let's write some code to test that that works. And I think it's not very interesting to test the iterator out here. Let's test it up here. So we'll say for string s in my list, system out print line, or actually we'll just say print s plus and we'll make a space and then just so that we'll do an indent before we do that as well so this if our iterator is correct that iterator method gets called implicitly by my for each loop 
And so this, we can use a for each loop to print everything that's in the list. So that'll give us a good indication that our iterator works. And we get null and null, so that's not good. Ah, we don't want to return null here. We want to return current element. This is why testing is important. So now we run again. So now iterator test world and Chandler. And that's what the list is there. So very good. And let's move it up a little bit so that we're doing it here. I don't think we need that print line. So now when we do the iterator test, iterator test higher up where the list is hello world Chandler Gilbert tail, notice we have hello world Chandler and Gilbert. And we could, if we wanted to, use the iterator to implement the toString. However, I'll just leave this as is for now because uh, that's a pretty decent enough implementation. But uh, you may want to try doing that just to see if you understand how for each loop methods work. But I think that's a good stopping point. I think there's other methods that we could ask it, we could implement here. You may want to try to extend this class so that it's an ordered list. Then you would need to write a method so that you, instead of add to front, add to rear, you would just have add and it would add it to the correct place in the list. Or you could maybe add an insert after, insert before method so that it searches for an element and then puts it before or after that element. There's some interesting cases there because what if it becomes the first or last element and that sort of thing. And then finally, you may want to add a remove specific element so that it goes through the list and removes something from inside the list. So all of those, there are diagrams for how to do those in the notes. And so it'll be, it would be interesting for you to try to uh, implement those methods on your own, but we won't actually do that here. We will leave this implementation as it is. So uh, there's a couple places where we have extraneous lines. So let me just make sure I'm happy with the overall format. And uh, I think I am. And so this will be our linked list implementation. If you're in 205, this will be what we use from going forward whenever we need a linked list. So I think uh, everything look, looks good here. Yep, so there's our linked list implementation. We should be all ready to use this anytime we need a linked data structure.